Got the tablet out, there, there's us, there's our projected course towards the Galapagos and uh, we've got a lot more to go before we get to where we want to be. But it's the speed that concerns me, regularly doing less than three knots. During my quest across the Pacific, bad luck seemed to dog me. Uh, once again, uh, more problems. While trying to push the boat a little bit harder, I managed to rip at the mainsail. A big problem. It had to be fixed there and then while the sail was still up. Got a refit at the back and then I've got a rope here, which is uh, through one of the reefing points, which I don't normally use much, uh, but today I am to take the strain off this part of the, the sail and that's tied up up there that's what I've done so far it actually gets better as it goes down um, fixing the mainsail while it's still up um, that's I've still got about another foot to do it was a bit of a bumpy night last night the boat was going like a train uh, and I was just hanging on uh, the AIS went up uh, off early this morning. I got myself out of bed quick to see this little blob here Look at that. What was it? I wonder up on deck as quick as I could to check it out Wow, and what a surprise boats actually be going quite a bit faster than I'd planned last night So I wasn't quite expecting this ladies and gentlemen is La Pinta otherwise known as uh, one of the Galapagos Islands Yeah, I made it! <laughs> That's 850 miles. Hard miles. I'm actually in a, a nature reserve, a protected zone. I'm not actually supposed to be here. Nobody comes to this park. This is not an island people would normally see when they come to this area. It's very, very early in the morning. Um, it's about 20 to 4 uh, local time, which is uh, Galapagos time. I've done my usual checks every hour and a half, uh, but there's something special about to happen. Um, I did a check not so long ago, uh, up on deck to make sure everything was okay. And then I realized I'm getting very close to the equator. Uh, this is the first time I've ever been in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, it's a big, big, uh, it's, it's a big occasion for us, me and Shadi. <laughs> this is just awesome, and we're so close. It's been an awful lot of work to get here. Uh, this is the AIS readout. This is a bit more accurate. It's got a faster refresh rate on it, and it's uh, that is. Uh, Zero 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 zero. I pointed four something or other at the moment. I can't quite read it. Yeah, baby, coming up on it. There she is. Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere. Winter. This is summer. Yes, 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 yes.
what a difference a day makes. The sun is out, the sky is blue, <laughs> apart from the odd wobbly like that, it's perfect sailing day. A relatively calm seas and uh, a gentle breeze. Uh, most of the sails out, there are some small birds flying around looking for little bits of fish and whatever else and they're, they're catching anything I throw overboard, I'm having a clean out today. I recycle all the plastic bottles that I buy mineral water in. Uh, I buy mineral water because it's the safest uh, water to drink in a lot of countries um, and that's just for drinking. Um, yeah and when I've used them up like this one, this is uh, tap water for, from the faucet. Uh, it's not particularly good this stuff, it's got a funny colour to it, but it's good for washing dishes and where I need fresh water and salt water won't do. But when these are empty, I saw somebody use them for something else. This. That is a water container packed full of plastic waste. The thing is with this uh, plastic waste, it's got food in it, like pasta sauce and stuff, that if you store it open, it'll start to smell and it's not hygienic at all. This, you can compact, that is, that is three weeks worth of plastic in there. It's quite light, it's, it's easy to dispose of. I can keep it on the boat contained and it doesn't smell. And that is the way I store my uh, plastic waste on board. Uh, and I dispose of it, obviously, when I get somewhere where it's uh, right to do so. I found that most sailors are pretty tuned into uh, what to do when it comes to garbage at sea. Uh, what to throw overboard and what not to. Um, things like paper, cardboard, it's biodegradable. It's an easy choice, throw it over the side. Plastics like this keep on board. Um, for disposing later uh, and this where the problem lies uh, where is it going and how is it going to be disposed of uh, back in the first world there a lot of it is taken care of in various ways recycled burnt destroyed um, in a lot of Caribbean islands for example what they do is they dig a hole and they throw it in uh, and that's it and that's true of many countries which you could sort of term as not being first world uh, to put it politely um, so, if you're keeping garbage to dispose of ashore, how is it going to be disposed of when it gets to shore? And this is what, what it comes down to with this, you can burn this, uh, and cruisers actually have their own garbage disposal parties, where they have a bonfire and they burn it on beaches, which is great. Um, but cans and glass, what do you do with that? Uh, cans and glass are both made out of natural material in one way or another, metal, glass, sand, but it can take quite a while to decompose, especially in deep water where there's less oxygen. So what do you do? Do you keep them on board? Uh, do you throw them in the sea? I throw a lot of stuff like that into the sea, but only in deep sea, not near the coast where it can uh, wash up on beaches and be an eyesore and also a health hazard. So it's how is it disposed when it goes to whatever country you're going to? Is it better to actually dispose of it in the sea? Is it safer and greener? because this is a huge area where I am. This is massive, trillions and trillions of gallons of water. And one can occasionally is uh, not going to do any harm at all, as opposed to taking a bunch of cans and throwing them into a hole in an island somewhere in the Pacific. I'd like to know your opinion on it. Uh, leave a comment below. I'm always open to ideas. And it is a problem that all of us uh, need to face in one way or another, what to do with this stuff plastic it's nasty stuff but it's a plastic world we live in had a bit of a nasty moment when I opened up the cabin sold to access one of the storage units and saw this water in the bilge luckily it had actually come from this which is my uh, in-house in galley uh, supply for the uh, sink uh, after getting everything out and cleaning it thoroughly uh, no damage done um, but for a moment it did give me a bit of a scare. And then a surprise. For yet a second time on this trip, another visit from a helicopter. That's amazing. We're a long way from the, from the shore of Panama. As you can see, it's blowy this morning. It's quite blowy indeed. Uh, the wind is, um, I don't know what it is, because as you probably know, I don't have a wind indicator. It blew off a few years ago, and I haven't replaced it yet. 
Um, but I'll put the microphone under the bimini so you can probably hear me better. But it, it is windy and choppy. I'm wondering whether to take more sail down. I've got three sails up, but they're all re they're reefed. Yeah, it's not pleasant at all. It's very bouncy. It was bouncy all last night. Um, the, the sea is a short, choppy, choppy thing, and it's bouncing. So the boat is bouncing all over. But we were slamming last night. She's coming down really hard. Bang, bang. And I heard. I had um. Um, uh, I passed this morning, I spent a few hours tr trying to going around, uh, well I was going past actually, this bright light, which I thought was maybe another Chinese fishing or whaling vessel, I don't know, or Japanese rather, which the other ones were. But this one, I think it's Spanish because this guy called me up. Um, unless it was those guys, I don't know. This is why I have helicopter. Oh, okay, okay, I see the helicopter, yes. Yeah, amigo. Do you go to, uh, I don't remember the name of the island, Fato Hiva or not? Uh, yeah, I'm going, yes, I think Fato Hiva is one of the islands, but first I go to the Gambia Islands, I think. Ah, uh, okay. It's a nice place, Fato Hiva. Do you serving alone or do you have company in your boat? No, alone. Oh, no bueno. This is no bueno. No mujer, no cry. Okay, amigo. Buena suerte, good luck. It's a pleasure to, to talk with you, Mr. Cactus. And it's a pleasure to talk with you. You're the, the first person I talked to for more than 25 days now. Okay, amigo. <laughs> Glad for you. Okay, uh, gracias. Uh, ciao. Okay, channel 1-6. One, 1-6. One, Wow, that's the fishing boat. The Venezuelan, but they're out of Ecuador. And uh, he said, uh, he asked me how many people are on board, and I, I said one, and I thought, Ugh. I mean, they're, they're a big old ship. I'm sure they're not pirates, but I, yeah, I couldn't be careful what you say. Uh, easy prey, you see, an old fart like me. But no, he just wanted to have a chat. We're in the middle of nowhere here. No way. That's that is the scary part. That is the scary part. You know, I'm just thinking, having awful thoughts that a mask coming down, something breaking now. I'm like, oh, there's no one here to help me. It's quite scary. I knew this was going to be like this. This is one of the reasons it took me a long time to get my mojo back to come and do, to do this part of the journey. But it has to get done. We did 77 miles last night. We're doing, uh, oh, yesterday rather. Um, because of these lumpy conditions, the boat's not going as fast as it could. And I, I can't, I'm not, I dare put more sail up. I'm not good, that'd be stupid. And the boat's just slamming into waves and then stopping and then starting again. I think that's the reason why we're doing bad mileage. Um, so it's going to take me a while <laughs> to get where I'm going. Uh, now this this swell is actually getting quite big now. You, again, you can't see it on the camera. You cannot see it. You cannot see what that's doing. And every time I point the camera to it, it stops anyway. Yeah, we get a few big ones come through, but it's not nice. Just tightened up on the mainsail. Using the twin sheets here, I've managed to pull her over um, and flatten her a little bit. Uh, but just pull her more in the wind. I had her flattened off that away, away from the wind. I've just, I've just pulled her up this way. Puts a bit more stress on her, but as long as she's not moving around or flapping, there's a bit of something going on there. I might pull her down a bit more. But uh, you can see the direction there from my telltales. Anyway, that's, that's put us up to 3.5 again, so I'm happy with that.
all but drifting this morning uh, under uh, the third reef on the main uh, it got nasty last night we jived twice that means that the boat turned the wind got behind the other side of the sail whipped everything across the boat went on her side on the opposite way everything went flying down below that happened twice I uh, had to come out and put a, the, the third reef in. Uh, it was huge seas, like, I mean, just, just nasty. It was just blur and bah, <laughs> screaming. It was bloody frightening, I tell you. First cup of coffee, before I do anything, uh, we did 32 and a half miles in the last 24 hours. That's really, really bad. We were in a hunker down mode, not survival mode, that's something completely different, but hunker down mode. We were like, did our best with the sails and the boat, made sure everything was safe and went below. It was so rough. And we, we were getting hit by these waves, the, the sound, bang! Frightening, frightening, everything's screaming in the rigging. And it's just, it's just so frustrating. You know, you, it, when it makes your stomach thinking oh my god almost getting too much I'm having to dig deep with this emotionally I mean because it's just setback after setback after setback I, I was up every every uh, 40 minutes every 20 minutes last night throughout the night so I'm very tired now and this has been going on as I said three weeks I was just having a think to myself about the monologue I've just done and what it'll look like uh, when I play it back later and the comments I'll get like man up man up man what's wrong with you <laughs> so so this is the take two this is the, the the manned up version of everything I've just said well it was a bit shit last night but never mind eh let's get on with it there's all right <laughs>